guys, so sorry about the artificial lighting, but I've been procrastinating for the past four hours or so because I didn't want to film another video, but I want to film it because I'm really excited to be able to talk about Obsidio by J. Christoph and Amy Kaufman because this book was amazing. I loved this book. The conclusion was so sad and amazing. I did feel a little bit let down by the ending, but overall, I really enjoyed the book. I loved the way it was written. It's just such a great series and I'm so annoyed that I didn't read Gemini until last month and I read Illuminae like two years ago or something so I have issues because I never caught up so I'm so glad that I read this pretty much as soon as it came out and I don't want to read any other book now that's my problem now is I'm doing the superhero thon so this was my first read for that and I don't feel like reading any other book ever again because this was just so good but there's just, I don't feel the will to read, so I'm just trying to make myself read because, you know, I cannot give up reading when I have so many books I need to read. But I'm excited to get into my review and there is going to be spoilers, so don't watch it if you had not read it. So I warned you, so make sure you don't. So let's just get into it. So got the book of notes and we're ready to go. So what I gotta say is this book was a ride, like the conclusion was hecka crazy. Everything was happening, everyone was coming together, like the characters, my god, like everything was just so overwhelmingly exciting and I just couldn't even contain it. I read this book in two days while also doing two eight hour shifts at work and like my god, I read every second that I had, I stayed up later than I should have and I was just so excited to read this and I'm just so sad now and I should have like let it wait a bit but it's a readathon you got to read as quickly as you can. After reading Illuminae and Gemini I knew the plot of this book was going to be hecka amazing and I was right and it was and I just like everyone needs to read this series because it's amazing. So these characters literally have been through hell. So much bad stuff has been happening and it's crazy. First Karen Zen IV if that's how you say it was attacked with a lot of people dying. The survivors then had an epic chase across space then the Hemdale job station is attacked and under siege then two universes were developed and then the whole entire thing nearly exploded which was hecka intense then the Hypatia makes it to Hemdale just for it to explode and then all the survivors come together on the Mao which is another ship now they're gonna go back to Karenzan so that they can hopefully go through the Mag Magellan jump station but then they find out that there is still survivors on this planet that was bombed in the first place and just like what are they going to do? And they have too many passengers on their ship to actually make it there without running out of fuel and oxygen. So the first like 10 pages of this book, it's just like, what in the hell is going on? What like the stakes were heck are high. And like my favorite thing about this book is that all the characters came together and actually got to talk to each other and be around each other. And it was just so cool. This is a comparison trilogy and you have two main characters in each book. And that's what I really liked about this series because I don't actually think it could have been as good if it was just the same two main characters. I like the introduction of new faces and new people and new personalities and it really worked with this book. And also with the format of this book, having all these different perspectives also made the story even better. So something that shocked my mind was the fact that these six characters are the ones that wrote the Illuminae Files. Like, what? Like, I mean, it's sort of obvious, but then again, no, it's not. The fact that Nick was Analyst 72130089, he has been the snarky and swearing persona behind the video summaries, like, can you, what? And like, people on the audiobook say that the guy's British, but Nick isn't British, so I don't know what's going on. And like, Aiden was behind getting a lot of his parts in the story, and Hannah was the one that put it all together with a tactical mind, and just like, the drawings were made by Hannah, and just, I just can't get over Nick okay like the fact that he's been doing it and I'm kind of don't understand though because the analyst did change over a bit during the series so was the other person Hannah or was it Tady like who what I don't even know and how they put in all the extra kissy scenes I'm just like <laughs> another thing too is the timeline for the actual fires being written confused me because I thought that like each time an event happened a new lot of files were sent to these people not that everything had already happened because at the start, when you get to the end of the files and then you got Frorish Burr and she is Ezra's mother, you know that in the first book. And then all the characters are so shocked to find out that that's Ezra's mother in the last one. And I'm like, why don't you know? Like, I thought you sent the files through and figured it out and Ezra's talked about this, but... No, so I was very confused about how this lined up and then how it can be like they would send the next file. So when they did the file bit in the other bit where Han, they think Han is dead and then she's actually alive and now they're only just making the files now before. Like, it's just, I don't even know what is going on. Like, how would they have the files at that point when Hannah was still over there? And I, d I don't know. 
Another thing about this book is it literally freaked me out and killed me from the start. When Hannah is at the court at the start, we know that she makes it, like she's gonna be alive. But what happens is she says not everyone makes it in the first page and I'm just thinking shit I don't want to read this because they're all gonna die. Like I couldn't handle any of these main characters dying. Then again I think someone needed to die to make this more realistic and make it more of a punch because like that's when it's the worst is you don't want them to die but then they die and literally no one died and I'm so annoyed because like people should have died. Like yes 2,000 people died but not one of the main characters which is just what? Like there was a lot of near misses but no actual deaths and that happened in Gemina as well and that's the book where I was just like come on no because you really do think Nick dies and then you really do think Ella dies and it's just like ah. Like Aiden doesn't even die like he sacrificed himself and he doesn't even die like what is this? So when Katie was going to sacrifice herself I knew that Aiden was going to come in and save her like but she's like we're just going to drive the ship in and use it as a bomb I'm like that's not going to happen you're not going to die you're not going to take Ella with you you're not going to take your father and everyone's there they're just like Katie what are you doing and she's like no we're going to go die we're going to go kill ourselves we're going to do this and I'm just like and then nothing happened there. And when Nick kept going on about the parachute on his back and how everyone was making fun of him, and then when their ship exploded with Nick and Ezra on it, I was thinking, well, good thing he's got that parachute because obviously they're not gonna die because they kept mentioning that in the story. It's these little things that you pick up. Like, honestly, other people who've read this, you did pick up on the parachute thing, right? Because it's so effing obvious. Like, if people don't pick that up, or the authors expected people not to pick that up, I don't know, but like, honestly, it was the the most obvious thing I've ever seen in a book. Isha and Reese's part in the book was the only time I was really worried because like they were sort of coming together and being friends and then Reese betrays her and tells everyone about her and then she starts getting bashed up and chucked in a room and Reese is off somewhere and I'm thinking oh my god like I thought this was it and the bloody Nick in his bloody summaries kept saying it doesn't end well for them and I'm just like and then they don't die. Fact two is that they actually wanted to get caught. Aiden put a virus on Aisha's tablet and when it was plugged into their computers he stuffed up the whole system which was actually really really smart but it had me going. And then Katya was shot and I'm thinking that's it, that's it, they've done it, they've killed the only effing child in this series. But no she makes it because the bad people just decide to give up and they rescue her and I'm just like oh come on. Like seriously like this just, they didn't take it far enough. And also with everyone's reactions who have read this book how they're just like error error death dying I don't even know how to feel anymore my life is over that book was so horrible and I'm thinking my god I don't want to read this like you guys you guys you got me going and then nothing effing happened the plot of this book was really good. The near deaths were really annoying. But let's just talk about the characters a little bit and the relationships between these people. I do really like the relationship between Katie and Ezra and it's the most solid out of the three at the start of the series, I'd say. And like, they're just a really cute and adorable couple and I love the way they talk to each other and like, they kept saying I love yous and they were kissing and hugging and I'm just like, yous are great guys. Like, so glad yous got back together. With Hannah and Nick, they've really had to find out what they wanted because their relationship sort of evolved from a life and death situation and like once they actually calmed down from it they'd really discovered that they knew nothing about each other and they had to really come together and find a space where they would be happy because like these versions of themselves had never kissed or been together in any sense so it was really nice to see their journey and I was so happy for them to finally get together and it was just beautiful. I loved Aisha and Reese so much and like Reese, his namesake would be proud of you, okay? <laughs> like they used to date but then some bad stuff happened and then they hadn't seen each other for three years so they were 16 when this stuff happened so they're 19 years old now. So the same with Katie and Ezra, how they broke up. So we've got another couple that's broken up who used to be together and now they're coming back together again which is like, you know, reusing the same storyline still. So Aisha was one of the survivors when Karazan was attacked and Reese became a biotech specialist so they are on opposite sides right now. Like they haven't been together for years they don't know what the other one's doing so to be on opposite side seems like something that could possibly always happen you know and like at first Aisha was trying to use Reese because she thought her relationship could bring him to their side because she's actually part of the rebellion and she's also a nurse but I liked that fact that she was using him because at first she didn't want to be near him and then she started using him and then she really discovered that she does still love this guy and I just love that whole journey and like out of the three couples I think they are my favorite because they came to such a good level of love and romance and they just cared so much about each other and the high stakes of the whole relationship just had me going and we can talk about Aiden now who was a character 
character that I loathe entirely. I don't understand the hype. He's killed so many people and they keep trusting him. I don't get it. Like first on the Alexander, he kills half the people. And then in the next book in Gemini, he somewhat does the right thing. And then in this book, he kills half the people on the ship so everyone can survive. And his logic is if you kill 1,000, you can save 1,001. And I'm like, no, that's not how you do it. And I don't know why Katie loves him so much because she's always talking about how much of a loss it is that he's gone and how creepy was the bit where he's like I'm not good and I'm not evil I'm Aiden and I'm like <laughs> I hate you so much I'm so sad that he didn't even die like I was just like it just he's dead and now he's stuck in her bloody bracelet on a chip or something and I'm just like why just just why just saying, Isaac Grant is the best character of the whole entire series. He is such a dad and just the parts when he's like, language people, language, like very Captain America and I digged it. But overall, this book did get a five stars from me. I have issues, but not enough to give it less stars because it's amazing. I'm so glad that these Aussie authors have gotten so much hype for their work and I can't wait to see what they write next because they are writing more books and I'm so excited. But anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later. Bye!